Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to AZ Arena for today's game with the visiting team Derby and the home team SB. We'd like to have all the guys line up at the blue line for the playing of our national anthem. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, this is AZ Alpha Arena, home of the newly formed Stoughton Brockton Knight Boxers. And today, it is their Southeast Conference rival, the Durfee Hilltoppers, coming to town to face what we are now calling the Stobros. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high above the ice here on the campus of Brockton High School. The Durfee Hilltoppers, an undermanned squad, 17 people wearing gear today, only 10 listed on their official roster, wearing their visiting all black jerseys, black shorts, with white trim around the red numbers and lettering the boxer, uh, the Knight Boxers, wearing their brand new all white jerseys with maroon and orange trim to a tribute to each of their school's main colors with straight black numbers and lettering. It is a decently sized roster for the newly formed Boxer Knights. Boxer, uh, the Knight Boxers coming in with an overall record of one and five. This one on the red warning track, chipped backhanded by number 25 for the Knight Boxers. Now the shot goes well wide from number 19 of the Hilltoppers. That, I believe, is Nick Sardinia. The 
The Stoboros are led by four co-captains, which is weird. In any normal sense, you'd have one captain and three assistants, but in this case, you have two straight captains from each school. Those would be Dante Mazzaro and Al Birmingham from Brockton, Mike Andrade and Dominic McGloin from Stoughton. Xavier Arpa, the goaltender for the Hilltoppers, has not been tested incredibly so far today, but has made a couple of stops. And for the Knight Boxers, it is number 22, representing Brockton High School, Ryan Spano in net. One of four goaltenders on this team. Again, two from each school. The others being Chris Andrade, Nathan Petty, and Peter Swayden. The biggest change, we'll call it, for this Knight Boxers team is that the Boxers have for the first time. Not really gonna say got demoted, but have opted to go down a division into division two. They had to appeal to the MIAA to make that change and the MIAA answered those prayers. And talking with not so newly named athletic director, Kevin Cairo before this game. So there's a lot of people upset. Why would you merge with, with another school Last season, Brockton did not have a full roster. So that was the main reason, and they said it was either merge with another school, specifically Stoughton, or do what New Bedford did and actually the hockey program altogether. And that was not a route that the athletic director of Brockton High was willing to take, so the merge happened. A lot of people are happy with the way things have turned out regardless of the one in five record. This team is having a lot of fun. A lot of these kids have played together in juniors and mites and things like that. So I've already got the relationship and head coach in his first season at the helm of this co-op is Dan Mark. Both these teams in Division Two, Section Two Southeast, Southeast Conference. The other teams including Dartmouth High School and Bridgewater Raynham. Backhanded shot is patted away by Arpa. High slot shot is sent wide by Kenny Young. Good stick work on the back end by defenseman Kenny Young. Take that one away from immediate danger. Now number 19 for Durfee. Sending it out to the, the blue line, unable to keep it in. This one set in and icing waved off as the referees decided that Young could get to it. Young with a hammer shift here. This one all the way in on Spano, and he covers for the faceoff. And both teams will change out their skaters. Madison Collins wearing number 10 in black, the only female athlete on the ice right now. Sends it back around the boards. Picked up a number 19. Collins sends it up and out of play, deflecting off of one of the night boxers. Faceoff will be in the defensive zone. 9.26 to go 
in period number one, still scoreless between these Southeast Conference rivals. Good work by the Night Boxers defense and bring it up is Dante Massaro, the co-captain for the Night Boxers. We are now joined by not so newly named athletic director, Kevin Caro, Mr. Caro. Happy New Year, Matt, good Happy to be New back. Year. Excellent to be back here at AZF Arena. So tell us about this co-op that, you know, it's been rumored to have been in the works for a couple of years. It's Stoughton and Brockton. It's the night boxers. Yeah. So yeah. tell us about the makeup of this team, how it all came together, and uh, how you think it's working to this point in the season. All right. So if we could just backtrack and um, probably March of last year, you know, I talked with Chris, who was our coach, and he just said, hey, I just don't think you're going to have enough kids returning to have a, a full roster. And I had talked to the athletic director over at Stoughton, and uh, the topic of conversation came up with hockey, and he's like, hey, I don't know what we're going to do next year. We don't have that many kids. So I proposed the idea to Dr. Murray and, and Mr. Thomas and we got the ball rolling. We met with the parents back in the spring and just kind of walked through the whole process of what it would take to appeal to the MIAA for a co-op. And we started that paperwork in the spring. And then right before um, we came back to school in August, we, we got word that we were approved for a two-year co-op with Stoughton. So that's when we really started um, really collaborating with, with Danny, the coach that's there now, and his assistants and the parents. And we just wanted to make sure that everything, all the pieces to the puzzle were in place as far as the uniform goes and how we were gonna split up costs for ice time and transportation. So the big thing is, and I told this to the kids and the parents when we had a meeting with them in early October, like without the two towns coming together, hockey in both schools was just going to be done. So I think that the kids heard that message, the parents heard it, and it's, it's been great. I mean, I've heard nothing but positive feedback from coaches, players, parents, and um, so far, so good. Looks like a, a pretty even mix from both schools it on is. the roster. We've yep. got four co-captains, Yep. Uh, of course, which is kind of weird. Usually it's one captain, three mm -hmm. assistants. Uh, we got the four captains, two from each school. The same with goaltenders, yep. two from each school. And that, that's a, an interesting mix. And along with uh, Coach Dan Marks, I see some representation on the, the bench from the Brockton High side as well. Yes, Connor Fitzgerald is there, um, is the assistant coach. Now, Chris Cunningham is now over at Archbishop Williams as an assistant coach over there. Uh, no, but I'm, I'm really happy that this, this the merger came together. And like I said, the kids se really seem to be getting along. I think they had a big team dinner over one of the um, parents' house last night. All, all the coaches and kids showed up. So the only, um, the only thing that we have to keep in mind is this is for two years. So, so you'd have to look at either we have renewing to we or have, yeah, we, figure out what's which, coming. I mean, renewing is not a big deal, but we just have to take a look at numbers and just kind of see where we're at at the end of next season. And that, of course, wasn't the only change coming into this season. Uh, this game, uh, in particular, is a matchup of the newly formed Southeastern Conference, uh, the Southeast Conference, mm -hmm. Durfee, New Bedford in all sports. It's not hockey. Uh, Bridgewater Raynham and Dartmouth joining the Brockton Boxers in, in that conference. Mm -hmm. So tell us what it was like to try well, to form this co-op and worry about getting into the new conference all at the well, same time. It wasn't so much the conference because we played Dartmouth in previous years. We played Bridgewater Raynham before, so it really wasn't that big of a deal. It was kind of figuring out if we wanted to continue to play at the Division One level and really get in over our head with some opponents, 
So we appealed to the MIAA to do uh, to drop down a division based on our numbers, and that was uh, that was granted. So we're actually, even though we still do play some D1 schools, we are technically a Division II school. When it comes to if we do qualify for the tournament, which there is no automatic bid anymore for if you win your league, that's that's done and over with. Which and, is and pro probably I, a blessing in disguise. No, I, th I think that's a good thing in a lot of sports because especially when we had, you know, a four, we had a three-team league. You won four games, you got in. Yeah, I remember a couple instances in particular where Brockton, uh, specifically in hockey, and I think uh, girls soccer was mm -hmm. the other big one, they pounded on Durfee and New Bedford, mm -hmm. got the automatic bid, and got blown out yeah. on some far yeah. traveling game mm -hmm. in the, the first round of the, the tournament. Division two, there's there's a lot of competition to be had in D2. You've got uh, Oliver Ames, of mm -hmm. course, uh, Stoughton, now Brockton uh, as part of the, the team. And uh, I believe Southeastern is division two. Mm. They're either two or three, I I'm think not sure. Three. I think vo vocational schools go down with a co-op. And they're co-op with uh, West Bridgewater. Yes. They're a powerhouse, and Brockton scores. Go. Stoughton Brockton scores a shot from just outside the high slot above the hash marks. It looks like number 16, that's Jack Mahoney, the junior forward. Getting on the board, the first in score in this South game. Middle School alumni of mine. The second goal. goal scored by number 16. It is 2 0. Stoughton Brockton over Durfee. Durfee, Somerset, Berkeley, I think, isn't it? Durfee, Somerset, Berkeley. Yeah, they're a co op. But that's, we'll, we'll call that the, the oversaturation <laughs> of the market. <laughs> With every school having a, a team, it's kind of diluted, and you've got the Catholic and private schools swooping in and doing some heavy recruiting of just about everybody all over the place, which is a, yeah. a topic for another time. But it's really drawn the talent pool yeah. away, and that's yep. why you're seeing it all over the state. I mean, I see it in my hometown of Hingham. I mean, before Hingham went up to Division I in hockey, they were losing kids to the privates. They were losing them to BC High and Thayer uh, because they never got a chance to compete in the Super 8 because they were a Division II school. And then they bumped up to Division I. A lot of the talent that was in the town decided to stay. And, uh, you know, they've been very successful. But it is. It, it's so tough to compete uh, against the Catholics when it comes to certain sports in which they can go to 40 different towns and communities around the state. And but that like you said, that's a, that's a story for another day. As you mentioned Thayer Academy, the yeah. alma mater of one Charlie Coyle of the yeah. Boston Bruins. Yeah, and their coach over there is fantastic. I mean, he does an awesome job. And kids, I mean, I think they know at a young age where they want to go. I mean, would it be great to stay in your hometown but and he's play? But Coyle's the, the perfect story. He, started, he played his freshman year in Weymouth, Weymouth, went to Thayer, and then returned for a senior season in, in Weymouth. Good stick saved by Spano, and it's collected out in front. That should be icing. And is. Well, we've seen it specifically with New Bedford taking that nuclear option and, yep. and getting rid of the program altogether. Yeah, because it is such a costly sport. I mean, I just see the cost of equipment, sticks, ice time, and it is an expense for parents once you're out of season because most of these kids, I, I would say, 80% of them play year-round. And it does. It, 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 it adds up. 
Well, especially the sticks, the, the new oh. carbon fiber sticks that that break so easily. Yeah. They're north of 100 bucks a piece. Yep, they are. And just a pair of skates now is about 300, 350. Then you got to worry about pads and then helmets. helmets oh gloves, yeah, you know the whole. In ice time, I don't think people realize how expensive it is to rent a sheet of ice for practices, for games. I knew the number at one point. I think the I, last I knew it was about 200 bucks an hour. I want to say that last year our budget for rental that we paid to the um, to the rink for the JV season and the varsity season was close to 30000 Wow. Just for frozen water with some lines. And that's a 10 game season at home? Um, yeah. And that's with practice time and we pay for practice time and we pay for ice time and for varsity games. And thank you for my coffee, it's quite delicious. There's one, so, the good thing about, you, you know you're from New England when, one of those things, when you know which Dunkin' Donuts makes good coffee and which Dunkin' Donuts doesn't make good coffee. And where is this one from? This one's uh, Tory Street. Tory Street, okay, Torrey Street, yeah, that right is a good one. West Side. In very few places in the country can you go in and just say a large regular and everybody knows that you want cream and sugar. I made that mistake way back when I was a youngin' in high school. I went through the drive-thru at, at Dunkin' to order what might have been my first ever coffee on the way to school. And I said, I, I want a large hot coffee with cream and sugar. And they said, okay, large, hot, regular. I said, no, 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 I want it <laughs> cream and sugar. And they're like, yes, one large, hot, regular. <laughs> So it took me a couple t tries to get it straight and realize that regular meant cream, cream and sugar. sugar. But I went to visit uh, some friends in New York and we went to get coffee and, and bagels. And uh, I went into to some random coffee shop and said I want a large hot regular. And they gave <laughs> me a black coffee. <laughs> there you go. Ten seconds left in the first period. It's two nothing. The Stobros over the Hilltoes. Oh, good shot! Here Could we be go. Three, a shot and a last second save oh. off of the shoulder of Arpa. A good flash. The buzzer sounds and we have reached the end of the first period. It's two nothing. The Stoughton Brockton Night Boxers. Night Boxers. Night Boxers over the mm -hmm. Durfee, possibly Somerset I Berkeley. Think I, I Hilltoppers, we're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second period action right after this. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. What this place needs is better graduation rates. What this place needs is less childhood obesity. What this place needs is free help with taxes. What this place needs is healthy breakfast. What this place needs is fitness programs for kids. What this place needs is early readers. What this place needs is mentors for teens. What this place needs is people to join us. What this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org. Hello and welcome back into AZF Arena for second period action between the Durfee Hilltoppers and the Stoughton Brockton uh, Night 
boxers. It's going to take me a while to get used to saying that. Once again, I am Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action high above the ice here at Asia. The score is two to nothing. The Stobros on top of their Southeast Conference rival, the Durfee Hilltoppers. The latest goal coming from Jack Mahoney. Backhanded shot is loose, and it is easily tapped in on the opposite side of the crease. Just a tiny celebration. It was number 20 getting this one, Colin Alessi, the sophomore forward. And that brings us to three to nothing. That goal, 36 seconds into the second period. The visiting Durfee Hilltoppers wearing their all black jerseys, black shorts, with red trim around the white numbers. Well, that, that is a mistake by the PA announcer here because they announced the goaltender, Ryan Spano, <laughs> was credited with that goal. And when he heard his name on the PA speakers, I don't know if this was in the frame or not, but he started jumping up and down. He went crazy over in the Brockton Stoughton crease. What is most likely his first goal of his career, but it was number it was number 20, Colin Alessi, that, that scored it. So it's 3-0. Durfee wearing their visiting all black jerseys, black shorts with red trim around the white numbers and lettering. The Stoughton Brockton Co-op wearing their brand new white jerseys with maroon and orange stripes, straight black numbers and lettering. Thirteen twenty-two to go in the second period. This is part of a crazy busy sports day in New England. We had the Bruins get blown out against Edmonton earlier in the day. There's the Celtics playing tonight. And the one everybody's talking about, nobody knows what exactly to make of the AFC wild card game. When was the last time we were talking about a wild card game in New England? The Tennessee Titans, the New England Patriots going at it in the first round of the AFC playoffs. A lot of people, a lot of chirping. Chirp, 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 chirp. This could be Brady's last game as a Patriot. Chirp, chirp. Do I believe that? No. Do I, do I think it's a little possibly? For those keeping score at home, Ryan Spano has just been robbed of his first career goal. And they did credit it to Connor Alessi. So yeah, chirp, chirp. This could be Brady's last game at Gillette. Blah, 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 chirp, chirp. Could be his last game in a Patriots uniform. I do not believe it. I'll tell you why I don't believe it. Because Brady is not done playing football and he is not playing football for the money and there are only two places that Tom Brady would play for those two places are as follows New England and San Francisco and thank you to Bill Belichick San Francisco has a starting quarterback for the foreseeable future. And Jimmy Garoppolo is not a free agent until the year 2022. For those reasons and those reasons alone, this is not Tom Brady's last season as quarterback of the New England Patriots. Get your thoughts in. Tweet us at Brockton Channel. Hashtag BCA Sports. Get your thoughts in. Is this Brady's last game as a Patriot? Is it his last season in Foxborough? At Brockton Channel. Oh, 
Offsides waved off as Durfee tagged up. It was number 11, Noah Curran, who was the step offsides. Now the one touch passing through the middle of the ice doesn't work, and the Hilltoppers take it back. It's number 19 going all the way across to Andrew Saunders, number 15 in black. The boxer, the night boxers have it in a chip in backhand goal for number two, Dante Massaro. Junior defenseman, one of the four co-captains on this team, cleaning up the loose garbage that the new goaltender, Jacob Bananka, could get to. This slight correction on something we were talking about with Kevin Caro in the first period. We were thinking this was a co-op of Durf Durfee, Berkeley, and Somerset. That is not the case this year. They couldn't come to an agreement. So this is just Durfee High School out of Fall River. Of course, the superintendent of schools down there, a familiar face to Brockton residents. That's Dr. Matthew Malone, former superintendent of the Brockton Public Schools before moving on to a state job as the Secretary of Education. Getting tripped up is number 26. That's Kenny Young. And it will be Madison Collins Heading to the box, as Spano has vacated his net for the extra attacker. Six on five, Durfee touches it, but not enough to get possession. Now they touch up right in the face off dot. Ethan Bolliou headed to the box, two minute minor penalty for tripping. First power play opportunity of the game for either of these squads. Brockton already up 4-0. Looking to add to it over their Southeast Conference rival. Durfee winning the face off but unable to clear it out is Dante Massaro, the offensive minded defenseman on the ice. He launches a shot that deflects wide. The net is off of its mooring. The right side of the net is a couple inches off of its slot. A peg in the ice where it is very loosely here held on. Let's see if anybody picks up on it. Offsides ruled. Nobody, nobody has yet noticed the net. One twenty-seven left. Now the extra man opportunity for the Knight Boxers. Shot, this goes well wide, unable to keep it in at the blue line is number seven, Steve Westerland, sophomore defenseman. One chipped in. And now played with a high stick, but not called. Goes all the way down, and Spano has to make a stop. 35 seconds left on the power play, 8-10. In the second period, it's 4-0 Knight Boxers on top of the Hilltoppers. Here's number nine, Kyle Crookshank. Good stick work to keep it in by number 23, Al Birmingham, one of the four co-captains. Chipping it around, back to Crookshank on the half wall on the far side. Behind the net, wraparound attempt, loose. Shoving match ensues, and cooler heads 
will prevail. The net jumped again, but apparently it landed back on its peg. Still looks a little crooked from our point of view. Able to keep it in at the blue line is Josh Greenspoon. Back to even strength. Greenspoon goes D to D to his defensive partner, Dominic McGloin. Mahoney. Working forward to the goal line. He lost at 7.15 left to go in the period. This one deflecting to Anthony Hearn. This shot went well wide around the boards to the far side. Mahoney collecting. It's instead taken by Madison Collins. Saunders off the boards, unable to clear the zone. 6.50 to go now in the second period. The score remains 4-0. Here's an opportunity, a shot from the high slot, blocked away in front, backhanded opportunity. Nobody knows where it is. Now it goes to the half wall, collected by Joe McNulty. Still with it, a shot and a save by Durfee's goalkeeper, and he holds for the faceoff. He's gonna dig it out. It was way up in his sleeve. Let's see what other tricks he's got up his sleeve. That one got in a very small gap under his glove, up his sleeve. Six ten left in the period. It's four nothing. The night boxers on top. Defensive zone faceoff upcoming for the Hilltoppers. Crookshank holding to the middle, loose. And Durfee is able to send it out. And due to it coming off the glove and outside of the blue line of Kenny Young, the boxers have to, or the night boxers have to tag up. Chip back, a shot, and another save for the Durfee goalkeeper. Brockton winning the faceoff, looking for the deflection. Durfee able to clear out. This period has been decidedly boxers, or night boxers. Five minutes to go. Two goals netted in this period for the Stowboros. And a clean sheet on the other end. And not many stats to show for it for Ryan Spano, who has not faced a heck of a lot of shots. This one sticked away by 
Goalkeeper collected in the corner by Anthony Hearn. Hearn right out in front, and this one chipped wide. It was deflected by Madison Collins off the stick of McNulty, who was left all alone in the low slot. Collins playing the body, swinging a miss on the saucer pass attempt, and Durfee clears it all the way down the river. Four minutes to go in period number two. Icing is called against the Knight Boxers. Forty-five left in the second frame. Semi-break opportunity is broken up, now sliding into the net. Might have been a little bit of a hook. It was Mike Andrade winding up in the four by six hole along with the Durfee goalkeeper. Neutral zone face off. Chipped high off glass. Out into the neutral zone where the night boxers try to collect. Time ticking down now. Three minutes left in the second period. Spinning with it is Al Birmingham. This one chipped up and it went off the outside of the post. Now unable to get to it is Matt Young. Sliding down to the ice. And a penalty upcoming. Heading to the sin bin is number 21, Mike Andrade, the Junior co-captain. We wait the official word on the penalty call. But it is Andrade in the box for two minutes, a minor penalty. Come out on the ice. I think Durfee called the timeout. <coughs> this is their first power play opportunity. Timeout on the ice. 2.32 to go in the second period. Durfee about to go on their first two minute power play. What the strategy is when you're calling a timeout with two minutes and 32 seconds left in the second period down by four goals with maybe five shots on net the whole game. I don't know what the strategy is there. Either way, it's five on four. A shot and an easy glove save by Spano. No screen, the shot coming from 
the point from Jacob Martins. Oh, well, four seconds bled off the clock there. 227 left in the period. 156 for the extra man opportunity for the Hilltoppers. One chipped up and out. Be a neutral zone faceoff. Just outside the boxers blue line. The night boxers blue line. Now they off to have the faceoff in the defensive zone. Apparently ruling that the night boxer that last touched the puck was in the zone when the puck deflected off his stick. Hilltoppers one shot on goal so far in this power play. Shot and a save and a quick whistle. That one came out, that was loose. Spano had it in his glove and it popped out and luckily for the night boxers, the ref was on the other side of Spano and didn't see it pop out. One minute to go in the extra man opportunity, 125 in the second frame. Shot was going wide, but Spano got it with his right pillow. This one sent all the way down. 30 seconds left in the power play for Durfee. Sent all the way down. Kenny Young backhands it all the way down the river where it's stopped by Durfee's goalkeeper. 10 seconds left in the period. Uh, in the power play, I should say, 40 left in the period. And Stoughton Brockton sends it down the ice once again, back to even strength. And out of the box is Andrade. Now 20 seconds left in the period, and it is icing against the Hilltoppers. So Brockton winning the faceoff in a quick shot. Kind of caught the Durfee goalkeeper by surprise, but he made the stop. 19.5 left in the period. Another quick shot. This one goes wide. Madison Collins collecting. Saucer pass a little off the mark. Kept in at the blue line, two seconds and one. The buzzer is going to sound without another shot by the Knight Boxers. We have reached the end of the second period. It is decidedly in Stoughton Brockton's favor. Four to nothing, the score. And Durfee has just finished their first power play 0 for 1 with only two shots on that opportunity. Four to nothing at the end of the second period in favor of Stoughton Brockton over their Southeast Conference foe, the Durfee Hilltoppers. We're gonna step aside, take a quick break and bring you third period action right after this. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have pandasma too? Does that run in the family? 
This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's <laughs> life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. What this place needs is better graduation rates. What this place needs is less childhood obesity. What this place needs is free help with taxes. What this place needs is healthy breakfasts. What this place needs is fitness programs for kids. What this place needs is early readers. What this place needs is mentors for teens. What this place needs is people to join us. What this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org. Hello and welcome back into AZ Alpharina for third period action between the Durfee Hilltoppers and your Stoughton Brockton Knight Boxers. <laughs> Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action high above the ice here on the campus of Brockton High School where the Knight Boxers have a advantage of four goals to none. Coming into this third period, the goalkeeper for the boxers, Ryan Spano, hasn't been tested much, but he's made a couple of strong saves and at least for a minute or two, he was credited with scoring the second Brockton goal, which would have been the first of his career and celebrated as such before they realized their mistake. The Hilltoppers are led by Xavier Arpa, wearing number 34. And Durfee is now on the board. Where did that one come from? Just a kind of lackadaisical shot that caught Spano off guard. Went shelf. It is now four to one, Durfee. Ending the 4-0 run for the Boxers with a goal 59 seconds into this third period. Bouncing one, un unable to grab it was Arpa. Now the Hilltoppers with breath of new life. Shoved off the puck is number 20, Jacob Martin. Trying to collect is Ethan Beaulieu. The boxers, the night boxers take it and throw a shot on net, doesn't get all the way in. In the Hilltoppers, carry it through the neutral zone. It is Martin. Martin into the slot and unable to grab it was number 11. Noah Curran. Jacob Martin credited with the goal assisted by Andrew Saunders. Saved by Spano, he covers for the faceoff. 12-14 to go in the third frame. <laughs> Sent right out in front, the Hilltopper on the receiving end of that pass, number two, Nick Sardinia. Had no idea that it was coming, and now sprinting up ice is Dante Massaro. And he scores! Massaro goes top shelf, left corner. 
And he's got his second goal of the game to put the boxers up five to one with 11.54 to go. Stoughton Brockton winning the faceoff. Massaro with the hat trick credited with the first Brockton goal as well. Here's the last two. Masaro's, Masaro with the hat trick. 11.31 to go in the third. Shot intentionally wide from Steve Westerland. Pocketing is Dominic McGloin. McGloin brings it into the Durfee zone. And now takes it in the corner. Tried to send it out to the point. No night boxer was present, so the Hilltoppers take it. They launch a shot off the end boards onto the apron, and it's McGloin who is going to be called for a soft penalty. That there is nothing dirty about that hit. They're going to call an elbow on McGloin. If his elbow made contact with the Hilltopper, it is purely the result of McGloin being about a foot and a half taller than the Hilltopper that took that penalty. Second power play opportunity of the game for the Hilltoppers, albeit undeserved. Oh, for one with two shots. Brockton winning the faceoff and clearing it at least into the neutral zone. Still trying to fight and get it down the river, unable to do so. And the puck finds its way to the half wall on the far side. Spinning down was Massaro trying to get in the way of that one. Now he just lifts it all the way down where Arpa plays it. 10 minutes even left to go in the third and final frame and slashed away from the opportunity is Kyle Crookshank. Taking it. Is number 22, Jared Martin for the Hilltoppers. He left it behind. And then number 19 is Ginger. A shot, and this one deflected wide. Number 19 is in a heck of a lot of pain trying to get to the Durfee bench. Not listed on our roster. Trying to go five hole on the self pass was Kirkshank, didn't work. Right out in front and good defensive work by Westerland. And McNulty eventually sends it across the ice off the boards and all the way into the Durfee zone. 10 seconds left on the power play for the Hilltoppers. Only one shot so far on this one. Back to even strength. 0 for 2 now with three total shots on the power plays for the Hilltoppers. It's Colin Alessi, the second goal scorer for the Knight Boxers. The 
Hilltoppers come away with this one. It's number 20, Jacob Martin. The only goal scorer for the Hilltoppers. Now the boxers, uh, the night boxers. 3-2 up ice. The shot and a goal. Top shelf posted in. That was Massaro again. Four goals for the young gun from Brockton High. Junior co-captain. I believe they collected that puck and gave it to the Knight Boxers. And crediting it with Connor Alessi, which would be his second goal of the game. However, I do not believe Alessi was on the ice when that goal was scored. This puck found its way through the protective netting here at AZ Offerino. Of course, not the greatest world-class facilities here at FMC AZF, the rink that's operated by the Department of Conservation and Recreation, DCR of Massachusetts. Holes in the net, lest we forget a couple of seasons ago where the Zamboni crashed four times in one game and it just stopped working. One out in front, poke check by Spano, and a couple of nice pad saves by Ryan Spano. Two rebound opportunities for the Hilltoppers in Spano's left pillow made the stop. Warming, or at least stretching out, is Nathan Petty. On the night boxers bench. It looks like he might get some ice time here with 6.45 to go and a five goal lead for the night boxers. Petty the senior. The one-time starter for the Boxers before the arrival of Spano a couple of seasons ago. Five fifty-seven to go in the third period, and again a five-goal lead for the Knight Boxers. Six to one, the score. And four of those goals coming from Dante Massaro. Skates getting tangled. It was McGloin. Durfee just looks like they're running out of steam. They've lost a lot of energy this period after scoring that goal 59 seconds into this third frame. They have really slowed the pace here. Passes like that to Jacob Martin right in the middle of the ice. No one around him. And he just couldn't handle it. Here's Cameron Norwood behind the net getting it over to Jared Martin, number 22. His shot sticked away by Spotto. Long stretch of continuous play here. Icing waved off, didn't quite reach the end line and a loud hit in the corner by Jaden Reck. 
no penalty is to be called on that. 4.20 left. This one behind Spano's net. Now four minutes to go. Petty looks like he's just waiting for his opportunity. Might come at the next stoppage. Spano couldn't close his glove around this one. It goes to the corner and eventually the half wall right in front of us collected by Mike Andrade. Andrade took a hit up high, shook out the cobwebs. It was number nine, Ethan Netto. Kind of looked like a cheap shot sucker punch type deal that was missed by the officials. Offsides waved off as Durfee tags up. Now three and a half to go, six to one. The night boxers on top and carrying it is Al Birmingham. His shot before getting taken down. They're not gonna call any penalties now. There's your threshold for the rest of the game. Wild interference not called. 3-10 is these two teams are gonna try to get out of here unscathed icing against the Hilltoppers. Winning the race was Al Birmingham. Petty in, Spano out as predicted. Nathan Petty taking the reins at the next stoppage. Spano had an excellent game save for that one opportunity top shelf 50 one, uh, 59 seconds in to the third frame. Petty, the senior, ending his first couple of minutes of the game. To finish it out, there is now under three minutes to go. Birmingham turns it over at the blue line, able to get it back, and now the Knight Boxers have a three on two up ice. One timer, it goes wide off the stick of Dante Massaro. Looking for more. Four goals for the young Knight boxer. 2.20 to go in the game. Decided advantage for the boxers. Birmingham changes out for Dominic McGloin. Shot this one higher on the boards, off a couple of stanchions. Unable to handle it, the blue line was. Now McLoyd backhanding out to Matt Young. Young into the middle, a shot in, a couple of nice saves by Art, but it's still loose. Nightboxers showing. No signs of stopping here with a minute and 30 seconds up by five. This one off of the dome of ARPA. That's what I call using your head. This one sent high and wide. Now it's number 18, Ethan Bellew. Out to the blue line, unable to handle it is Kenny Young now. 70 seconds to go in the third period. It's a five goal lead for the Knight Boxers. Looking to get just their second win on the year. Coming in with a one in five record in the first year of this co-op program between Stoughton High and Brockton High. The agreement in place for two years could be renewed, renegotiated, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody happy with it so far. 35 seconds to go, it is 6-1. The Knight Boxers on top of the Durfee Hilltoppers in a Southeast Conference clash that has gone decidedly in favor of the Knight Boxers. A save by Petty, his first of the game. This one sent all the way down for an icing with exactly 15.7 seconds left. Defensive zone face off. Noah Curran in to take it for the Hilltoppers. <laughs> a 
winning it is the night boxers and winning it in such a fashion that it almost found its way to Nathan Petty. Top shelf, five seconds. Now two and one. The buzzer sounds and we have hit the end of the game. The score six to one. The judges scorecards show in favor decidedly of the Stoughton Brockton Knight Boxers. Leading the way, Dante Massaro with the hat trick plus one for the team from Stoughton and Brockton High. The Durfee Hilltoppers got their lone goal. 59 seconds into the third period from Jacob Martin unassisted. So it's six to one, the Final score, Stoughton Brockton moves to two and five on the year and the Durfee Hilltoppers move to 0 and six. Six to one, the final from Asia Farina here on the campus of Brockton High School, Stoughton Brockton. With the victory for everyone here at Brockton Community Access, our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson and we will see you next game.